Hey, welcome back to my video. Uh, Nigel here with uh, Offline to Online, the creator and founder of Offline to Online. The place that you're going to learn to transition from um, a job into a traditional business or online. So whether you are an entrepreneur, um, busy professional, or a CEO, we're going to show you how to create that massive residual income part-time, allowing you to quit your job, uh, stay home with the kids, or just travel the world and also increase your net worth at the same time. But today's subject's going to be ATM chargebacks. Now, anytime you own an ATM, you're gonna get chargebacks. And that means the customer uses your ATM, and for some reason, the ATM calls the bank, it, uh, excuse me, I'm losing my thoughts here, guys. The ATM calls the bank, it verifies you've got the money, it approves your transaction, but then all of a sudden, the ATM doesn't give you your money. And that's called an ATM chargeback because now you've been charged the $20, $100 from your bank. I've been paid because I own the ATM, but you didn't get the money. And the way that works is there was, a con there was maybe a communication happened. Maybe the, the internet got cut off all of a sudden. Maybe the power failed and it came back on. Either way, you're going to have to go to your bank and do what's a reg e r e g e a reg e now the trouble with that is if you go to the bank about my atm and say hey mr bank i did an atm over there at nigel's atm i didn't get my money the bank's going to call me back and they're going to say nigel we've got a report here that says joe didn't get her, get her money would you please prove that you got the transaction or she didn't and I go through my journal and says, oh, sure enough, Joe did a transaction for 100 bucks and didn't get paid. It says it right here. But I got paid the money. The way to deal with that, if you allow the customer to go to their bank and dispute it, the and it's illegitimate, and the customer did not get the money, you, got, you did get paid, you're going to pay a fee of $18 up to $80 just for the bank to give them back their money. So now you're gonna give them back their 100 bucks, plus their surcharge, plus 18 up to $80, depending on the network that they used. The reason for that, the bank is going to have to do the work, and they're gonna give you the fee. The way to get around that, ideally, if the customer says they didn't get their money, you definitely want to go online on your phone Look at the ATM transaction where it says Joe did a $100 transaction and it'll say requested and dispensed. If it says requested 100, dispensed 100, that means they didn't get, and they didn't get, then that, sorry, and their receipt says requested 100, dispensed zero, you know you got paid and they didn't. What you'll do is to save that fee of $18 or minimum, you're going to have the customer, Joe, sign a receipt saying they received the money. Because if you don't and you give them back their money, they're going to go straight to the bank and dispute it anyway, and you've got no proof you paid back Joe the money. So ideally, I highly recommend you tell your staff, if someone doesn't get their money, take their name, take their number, take a copy of the receipt if you can, and take a picture of it, and find out right away if that person is legitimate. Now, if they did get their money, and the ATM says they got it, and the processing says they got it and they're just trying to pull a fast one then you send the report to the bank and the bank says sorry mr joe you got your money you know nothing we can do for you everyone's happy no fee involved there so if possible and someone does, does get a charge back make sure you take care of it right away oh and by the way if it's an ebt a food stamps on a credit card if they're using that and they don't get their money and it's legitimate you can pay the higher end, $80 or more, just for the government to give them back their money. So you definitely want to be careful about allowing people to go to the bank if you can. If you can take care of it now, do it. Just have, make sure you have them sign that paper and keep that and their receipt in a place where you filed away. So that way, because I have done that before, given back a person their $200, and I didn't get, I trusted them, I didn't get them to sign a receipt. The next day, or the same day, they went to their bank, 
said, hey, I didn't get my money. They got their money back a second time. And this was on a Sunday. I drove out to Long Beach, give the person their money, and they still went to their bank next day and said I didn't get my money. I had no proof. I lost $200 plus the fees. So anyway, guys, that's all I have to say today, this short video. Please go ahead, like the video below. Um, email me questions. Give me a call. I'm always, my phone's always on. Uh, my number at the end of the video. And I appreciate your time, guys. Thanks. Talk to you later.